To get started with a sample app for the iPhone, we're going to use the utility application template that Apple provides in Xcode. But before we do that, we're going to look at the sample app that we looked at before. Remember the Hello World app? So let's open that sample app again just to see what objects or code we can use. Depending on the item selected in the Project Navigator list, an editor pane appears for that item in the editor area. So right now we're looking at the project level editor. For example, if we select mainwindow.xib, we'd see the interface builder and the main view of the Hello World app. Now we're going to choose a scheme, the iPhone 4.3 simulator, and then we're going to run the app in the iPhone 4.3 simulator. So basically, the Hello World app displays the world as a background image and lets you type text that it can display. For example, we could say, hello, everybody, and it would change the text to that. Of course, we think we can do much better than that for our sample app and still keep our project quite simple. And we might want to borrow that Earth image for our background and possibly some code as well, including the text field for entering text. So let's take a look at what the code does to do this, to create the text field and to show the background. We will first reset the iPhone simulator. We we'll then quit the simulator. Now, after running an app in the simulator, you use the debug area to control your app's execution, view its variables, and view its console output. Here are the debug view selectors, and I've clicked the middle selector to show both the variable pane on the left side and the console pane on the right side. We're going to get into using the debugger later when we actually need to debug something. So for right now, we want to hide the debug area. To do that, we click this icon all the way on the left side of the debug editor. And now we have a full screen view of the editor. So let's first examine the main window to see how it displays this background. Mainwindow.xib is selected and the interface builder appears. We select the background and we open the utility area and select the file inspector. The interface builder shows a number of elements here in what's called the dock, starting with the files owner, the first responder, the Hello World app delegate, and the window. We will use these elements in the interface builder later, but for now, let's concentrate on the window. And let's open up the dock so that we can see what's in the window. Down here is the Dock Expander button. We click that, and we can see that the window object has elements within it. We click the Disclosure Triangle to open the window object and select the Image View, which is background.png. To verify that this is a file in the project, we go to the Attributes tab to show the Attributes Inspector in the Utility area. Here we see that the Image View is set to the image background.png. Now let's look at the rest of the user interface that appears in the Hello World app. And that would be in the Hello World.xib file. Here we see that the object view includes not just the image view that we know already as the background.png, but also a label and a text field. The label displays the text that we type into the text field. The text field allows a keyboard to appear when you tap in it and then lets you type text. As you see the text field's attributes, they include a placeholder, which gives it some text to show, its alignment, border style, text color, and even the font. We'll show you how to set all of these attributes for a text field and for other objects in the interface builder later on. For now, let's keep an eye on this and the background.png. These are the elements we probably will use in our new project. And let's take a look at the code that actually controls the view of Hello World. MyViewController.h is a header file that declares MyViewController itself, the interface, the outlets for text field, label, and string, and the properties for text field, label, and string. These will most likely be the same kinds of outlets and properties that we're going to be defining in our project. In ViewController.m, which is the implementation of MyViewController, we see that text field, label, and string are synthesized. 
I'll be explaining that when we type them in ourselves in our new project. The view did load method is here to set up the view itself. And as you saw earlier, we actually turned this method update string into a comment and retyped it here. We did not include these lines because they are comment lines also. So after the view is loaded, the string is updated, text field should return method invokes the method that changes the greeting, which are the words that appear. We also have some event processing to dismiss the keyboard when the view outside the text field is touched and to revert the text field to the previous value. We also have a deallocation method to adhere to memory management rules. This releases the instance variables, text field, and label, which are objects in the user interface that were created by the interface builder. Now, a lot of this code looks unfamiliar right now, but it will begin to look familiar as we begin to type some of it into our new sample app. We can leave this project open so that we can come back to it and grab the things we need. But we can start our new project by choosing File, New, New Project. The first thing we need to do is to choose a template for our new project. And we need to make sure that we have selected the application section of iOS so that we look at only those templates that apply to the entire application for iOS. We choose the utility application template to create the skeleton for a fully functional iPhone app. We will flesh it out with some more code that transforms it from an app that just sits there and looks pretty to an app that actually does something. We're going to create something that's a little bit better than the Hello World app. We're going to borrow the Earth image for our background and possibly some code as well, including the text field. But we can add some animation. And because we're going to use the utility application template, we can put the text field on the flip side view, out of the way of the animation, but also easily accessible just like a utility app. We're going to call this project My World. It's about using the Hello World app's sample app background image of the Earth and making something happen with words. My World is supposed to display falling words, text flowing down the main view over the Earth background, starting with the words, Peace on Earth, and at a specified time interval and at a speed the user can change. We'll also enable an iAd banner from Apple's iAd network to appear in the main view. My World should also allow the user to enter text in the flip side view to substitute different words for peace on earth and eventually to provide a photo view that lets the user select a photo from the iPhone's photo library to substitute for the words. So we've just chosen the utility application template and it's explained at the bottom of the pane. You can select other application templates and read their descriptions to see what they're all about. Some of the templates are obviously for iPad development, such as the split view application template and the tab bar application template. But most of them can be used with either iPhone or iPad, such as the navigation-based application template, the view-based application template, or the utility application. After choosing utility application template, click Next. Here we provide the product name for the project. I named the app project My World. We also have an opportunity to add the company identifier. If you leave this blank, Xcode will fill in your name. These two pieces of information form the bundle identifier, which is used in a variety of tasks, including provisioning the app for distribution. You can also choose to add core data resources to use core data for storage. You would select the use core data for storage option right here. I don't use storage in my My World app. In other words, the app we're building doesn't save anything to the iPhone itself for temporary storage. Therefore, I don't need to use the core data option. Another option available is unit testing. The option include unit tests. This lets you specify behaviors for your code to ensure that it still works the same way after you've modified it. Unit tests are part of a style of programming that involves writing test cases before writing the code to be tested. You can set requirements in concrete before writing any code. I don't use unit testing for my world as it would make the process of explaining Xcode much more complicated. So we won't click the include unit tests option. Now we're ready to click next. Here we choose a location on the hard drive to save the project. Before we do that, I just want to call your attention to the create local Git repository for this project. Git is a software control management system that keeps track of changes in the code. It saves multiple versions of each file on your hard drive. 
and stores metadata about each version of each file in a repository. Git can be used purely as a local repository, or you can install a Git server on a remote machine to share files among team members. We're not going to use Git for this project, because once again, it would really detract from what we want to do, which is to show you how to use Xcode to create something simple. But I just wanted to let you know that's there in case you are planning to use a development team. Next, click Create so that Xcode creates the project and opens the workspace window. The My World Apps project is now ready to start editing. As you can see, there is lots of stuff already available. The project navigator shows an outline view of the contents, files named myworldappdelegate.h and .m, main window, main view controller H&M, and so on. It also includes flip side view controller H&M and a flip side view. To look at some of this code, let's first click mainviewcontroller.h. The code for the file appears in the source editor on the right side of the project navigator. The header file maincontroller.h defines the interface for mainviewcontroller and defines one action. IB action stands for interface builder action. And that action is show info. We will show you what that does in a minute. So as you can see in the project navigator, there's already an application delegate, the My World App Delegate H header file and the My World App Delegate M implementation file. There's also a main view, mainview.xib, and you can see it in the interface builder to the right. There's a flip side view, flipsideview.xib, and you can see that it includes a done button and a title. In the supporting files, we find the pre-compiled headers, myworld.prefix.pach, as well as the property list, myworld-info.plist, and the main function, main.m. The frameworks folder has three frameworks, the familiar UI kit and foundation framework, and the core graphics framework, because it expects to use them. Later on, I'll show you how to add another framework, and it will be for including iAd advertisements in your app. The products folder contains the myworld.app file. This, of course, is not the source code of the app, but rather the compiled version of the app, which means it has been translated from the source code into the object code for the iPhone's processor to execute. At the moment, this file is listed in red because the file can't be found, which makes sense because we haven't yet built and run the app. Let's do that right now. I realize it's just a template, but it'll give you an idea of how much code is already in it. We'll choose a scheme, the iPhone 4.3 simulator, and then we'll click the Run button to build and run the app. The status pane tells us that the build was successful, and the simulator launches with the app. Of course, the app will also run on an older iPhone, so let's just try that. We will switch to an iPhone that does not have a retina screen. Of course, the app closes, so then we have to swipe, find the app called My World, touch it again. Sure enough, it appears. Let's go back and choose iPhone Retina. Swipe and click it to start it up again. So the app has a status bar and a gray window. And it has an I button, the information button in the lower right corner. This is the hallmark of a utility app. If we click the I button, it displays the flip side view. We now have a standard iPhone app with the flip side view, complete with a done button. Click the done button, goes back to the main view. It even plays a nice little transition between the two views. Well, this is a lot of stuff that's already put into your app. In the older days of programming, it would take weeks to put together something like this. Now, we need to reset the simulator to its original settings. Click reset, and then we can quit the simulator to go back to our code. You should reset the simulator to the original factory settings before quitting the simulator and before building and running your app again so that you clear all the settings and data for the previous version of the app and start fresh. So now you've seen how that app works and you've seen how the Hello World app works. Before you add anything more to this skeleton of a utility app, it helps to look at how it does what it already does. By uncovering the mysteries of what this template does at runtime, you can understand a bit more about where to put your code.